Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. I've had a pretty busy month, but finally got a chance to put together a video for you. And continuing with the theme of combining different desktop fabrication tools, in this case, CNC milling and 3D printing, uh, we are going to make this today. Uh, now, let me just back up just a little bit and talk about why I've been so busy. I recently got back from the East Coast RepRap Festival, which took place down in Bel Air, Maryland. Now, if you're familiar with the RepRap movement, you know it was all about 3D printing. I had a great time, met some awesome people, and highly recommend if you're in the East Coast to check out next year's event. This is going to be an annual event. Now, right before that, I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico for the Nation of Makers Conference, or NAMCON. Uh, which took place in New Mexico. Uh, so this was a conference uh, all about running makerspaces. So I got to meet uh, leaders of uh, makerspaces from all around the country and we got to shoot some ideas back and forth. So really enjoyed it and now I get to come back and try some new ideas at uh, my space back home. Uh, there were some great talks there. Uh, keynotes were done by Adam Savage, who was there. Uh, Dale Doherty gave a great talk. And also, there was a great presentation by the wonderful people of Magic Wheelchair, which I'm going to highly recommend you check out if you're looking for a, a great community project that gets your Makerspace members uh, involved and gives back to the community. Even if it's you don't run a Makerspace, it's just a great community project to get involved with. So uh, if you're a maker, especially. So definitely check it out. I'll leave the link down below, but it is uh, magicwheelchair.org. So the theme of the conference was intentional inclusion, which is something that's very important to me. Uh, I run uh, our makerspace here and it's uh, something that I keep in the forefront of what our mission is. Uh, I give tours all the time for people who come to check out the space and I definitely talk all about the tools and the equipment, uh, but I always mention the culture of the makerspace, which is that culture of sharing ideas with one another, of collaboration, of inclusivity, the idea that uh, everyone belongs and everyone can be a maker. So leading up to the event, there was this crowdsource project by uh, We The Builders and the idea was they took the iconic poster of Rosie the Riveter, uh, which they scanned. Uh, actually, well, first they made a 3D model out of clay, and then they scanned it and then broke it down to like over 2,600 pieces, put the files online, had people print it from all over the place, and then mail uh, the the actual 3D printed objects uh, into Santa Fe and then we got to build it together uh, which was led by We The Builders but we all had a chance to get involved in building uh, the six foot what turned out to be a six foot statue of Rosie the Riveter. Continuing with the theme of celebrating the contributions and diversity of women makers. I had a similar uh, project idea which involved this silhouette lamp uh, this was one, the original one actually involves a real light bulb, an Edison light bulb that you plug in. Um, but I wanted to take the uh, CNC part and scale that down to fit on my Nomad Pro. But instead of using a real light bulb, I wanted to 3D print a light bulb and use an LED. The inspiration for this project actually came from the Inventables website, where you'll find it along with other great projects under their projects tab. This one's done by Joe Whitaker, who does a great write-up and also has a YouTube video here where you can follow his steps. One thing to know is you have access to the SVG files, and you can bring that into Fusion 360 and extrude it as a body, and I'll go over that in a minute. I'll leave the link below where you can access the site directly. Here's the Fusion model, and as you can see, I have the SVG file extruded into a body, and then I went ahead and modeled the light bulb and also the base for the profile. For work holding, I'm using the simple technique of applying masking tape to my workpiece and also to the wasteboard, and then coming in with CA glue, putting CA glue on the wasteboard and then I sprayed the workpiece tape with this accelerator and then simply just holding it down for a few seconds and this works really quick and gives you a very secure fit that's easy to remove when it's done cutting. Using a quarter inch two flute flat end mill I started with a facing operation which just meant I took off about a millimeter or so off the top layer 
Uh, the thing with wood is they tend to warp so in order to get a piece of wood of consistent thickness I applied the facing operation to the top and the bottom of the wood before starting my cut. Next I switched to an 8 inch single flute end mill for my 2D contour operation. Now as far as my feeds and speeds I am still experimenting here uh, but I'll let you know what I use which was a spindle speed of 9000 rpms, a feed rate of 72 inches per minute which gave Gave me a chip load or a feed per tooth of 8,007 inch and I also used multiple step downs here and went down 30 thousandths of an inch each step. After the 2D contour operation it was time to remove the part and here's the beauty of using the crazy glue method there is that it's really easy to pry apart. I simply use one of these spatulas that I use for my uh, removing my 3D printed parts and just uh, pried it under it and the part just popped out. Now you know you have a good cut when all that's left is just the tape that you have to rip apart. To make the base I cut a piece of 2x4 down to the size, did another facing operation and then came in with a 2D pocket to cut the little slot in the middle where the uh, silhouette piece is gonna fit right into. And then another 2D contour operation to cut out the piece. Look how close I am here to the top of my part. There's barely enough room to squeeze by. I love this part. There's one more toolpath to be done and that's going to be the chamfer operation. So I swapped in a chamfer end mill and just followed the contour around the top of my piece. I actually used the 2D contour here to follow that outline and give me that nice chamfer. Next I sanded for a nice surface finish and she is all ready for some wood stain. I just have to decide now what colors to go with. This is where Fusion comes to the rescue again. Using the appearance menu I can simply drag and drop different wood finishes uh, to test out different looks and see what combinations I like. Before applying the stain I applied a layer of this pre-stain. It says it's supposed to help the stain absorb more evenly. I don't know, I saw it at the store and I grabbed it. I decided to go with a red mahogany for the girl and then mix the red mahogany with an ebony in order to get a darker color for the base. And here she is after staining. I 3D printed my bulb using clear PLA and as far as my settings, I went with two shells, zero infill, and I got the best results with 0.1 millimeter layer height. Now as far as assembly, I kept it as simple as possible. I used a CR2032 coin cell battery, which is a 3 volt battery and a color changing LED, which makes for this really nice effect. Here are some pictures I took of the light bulb and I did upload the file to Thingiverse, which I'll leave the link down below so you can grab it if you'd like. Let's now briefly go over the Fusion design. I brought in that SVG by just going to insert and insert SVG and then extruded it up to give it some thickness. The approach I took with the light bulb was just to sketch half of it using lines and the spline tool to create the curve and then simply went to create revolve to give me my shape. I then used the split body command to split this into two parts, the actual bulb and then the base part of the bulb. And I could have gone here and just uh, gone to create a thread to create the threads, but I wanted my own custom threads, so I used the coil command here uh, to create the exact threads that I wanted. And then finally, just a simple extrusion on the top for the coin cell battery and the LED to go into. I will leave a link below to the Fusion 360 files or F3D files for those that are interested in downloading the design. The nice thing about having access to the F3D file is that you can simply go into the sketch, delete some of the constraints, and then modify some of these spline points to give the light bulb your own unique look. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, hit that like button below and feel free to share this video. As always, leave your questions and comments below. And if you want to catch my next videos, make sure to subscribe and you can even hit that little bell button to be notified. I'll see you next time.